abiondemand.com. Automotive training you can receive anywhere, anytime. Your online training starts here. So, let's play a little game, shall we? So which of these has the most lines of computer code? The Space Shuttle, the Boeing 777, the Mercedes S-Class, or wait for it, the B-2 Bomber. What do you think? The Shuttle had a staggering amount of code when it was built, 500,000 lines of code. This is little tight Britain constant lines of data that they used to program the vehicle to do its job. The 777, depending on its configuration, three to four million lines of code. And that, that one's not even new anymore. This guy is the king. Actually, we've surpassed this now. This particular vehicle, 100 million lines of code. So you're probably wondering, what about that B2? Well, here's where it lies. The company that programs the B2 bomber has figured out how to get the total lines of code down to 500 to run that extremely sophisticated airplane. Why? Because the more lines of code you have, the more potential you have for having some kind of a flaw in that code. You've heard it called a bug. The number of bugs in that code at 500 lines, they say it's unbreakable. So far, it's been unbreakable. This company also works with Chrysler on their scan tool. So now we need to talk about the why. Why do we care about this? Where are we going with this? And why is it important that I pay attention? Well, if you are living on planet Earth in the auto repair industry, you've heard ADAS, ADAS, ADAS. You've heard somebody say that. And odds are you've probably been to a class or two or 10 on it. So we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to take you from the beginning of advanced driver assistance systems. That's what those four letters actually stand for. So what we're talking about first is a vehicle that's got one assistive control that helps a driver to recover faster than they could on their own. You all know what the first one was. It's analog brakes. They called it anti-skid originally. It was just on the back, right? That moves on to putting two controls together where one control works with the other, not independently of, of one another. So this would be your vehicle stability controls, your ESC, those sorts of things are the very beginnings of combined function automation. Level three is a vehicle that's self-driving at times under certain conditions, but the driver is expected to take over what we call an adequate transition period, and that should be in quotes, because nobody actually knows what an adequate transition period is because you don't know the road conditions. Most automakers are very afraid of level three. They want to go from level two, where we are mostly right now, and jump right up to level four. So what's level four? This is a vehicle that is autonomous under certain conditions. It can do something all by itself. That could mean traffic jam assistance, that could mean parking, or that could mean cruising down the highway. You will not find vehicles that do all of them under level four. And then the final piece is level five, which is fully autonomous. You get into the vehicle and you say, I want to go for coffee. The vehicle knows where you like to go for coffee. It may also come up and say, hey, you know what? There's a coupon over here. If you want to go over here and get one, you want me to drive you over there. It pre-orders, you get there, it's waiting for you. Starbucks has already got this stuff worked out, so this is coming. But that vehicle is not coming for a long time. In fact, most of us that have a little bit of the gray over here very likely will not ride in these vehicles in our lifetime, at least not on open roads. They'll, they may be used in combined environments and very specific situations, but not likely you're going to own one of these because there's a lot of work to do and it's not cybersecurity that's the problem. Thanks for watching this video presentation. If you'd like some more training, just go to aviondemand.com or go to one of our social sites. That's all the time for now. I'm Steve. I'll see you later.